Yuji Itadori is the protagonist of Jujutsu Kaisen, and in the upcoming Shibuya adaptation that the anime will cover, he will face against the strongest fight of his career so far as a Jujutsu sorcerer. Now there is a bit of discourse over how important Yuji is as a protagonist and how powerful he currently is and will be in the future. This isn't going to be necessarily a power scaling video as I already discussed how strong Yuji's strength is in a previous video. Go ahead and tap in on that video for your boy. <laughs> but today I wanted to come to my boy Yuji's aid and defend him from these fraud allegations and kind of look at where I personally think his future lies as a protagonist. As usual, heavy, heavy, heavy spoilers for the manga concerning Jutsu Kaisen uh, past the Shibuya arc, so if you don't want to see any of those spoilers, make sure you leave and click off this video, but leave a like first, I appreciate it. So in the beginning of the series, Yuji had an exceptionally pivotal role in the first arc, or in a couple of arcs in the series as he should. We got introduced to him as well as the cast and crew that we have grown to love over the course of the series, uh, Gojo, Idamaki, Maki, Megabi, etc. We got to see Yuji learn about the world of Jujutsu Kaisen and we got to see him understand that he will be executed once all of Sukuna's fingers are consumed by him. You, you get the gist. Also real quick tangent, I do love Jujutsu Kaisen as if it's not obvious at this point but i do feel as if the pacing has and always has been extremely rushed we didn't have necessarily as much time necessary with the trio of kids uh you know yuji megami and sak nobara they only went on two missions together total as a group collective that were actually completed those being the detention center and the finger retrieval with the fight against kechizu iso and the finger bearer anyway as yuji goes along he runs into junpei and he begins to understand that within the world of jiu-jitsu sorcerers and curses you have these regular people that are trying to live their lives and they just want to be happy or at least find some semblance of happiness yuji begins to learn how twisted these cursed spirits are after witnessing maizo's manipulation of junpei as sub subsequent death at the hands of Mahito. Then he proceeded to get served a hot steaming L by Mahito and Sukuna when they decided to just clown on his ass. As he moved on, he faced off against Hanami and the Kyoto students. Yuji ended up learning the Black Flash and got a significant boost to his power set. Considering that Divergent Fist isn't all too useful for special grades, or anything with hacks involved, period. Moving on, we see that Yuji encountered Kechizu and Iso, and this is where Yuji gets his first official kill as far as taking life goes. And when I say kill, I mean something more so with something conscious, not like those smaller children that were curses like when he fought Maito, even though he did feel an incredible amount of guilt over that immediately. After moving on from this, canonically, we move right into Shibuya, and this is where our boy Yuji gets thrown right into the goddamn ringer. Like, but I say him get cook up, but I say he get shift up grill oxtail with the onions and carrots you sound saying when heading to the shibuya arc the first fight we encounter is mecha maru versus mahito which is honestly a pretty underrated fight in the series in my opinion but then we move on to stuff like gojo versus the disaster curses and we all know how fucking epic that ended up being there were many fights that occurred inside of the shibuya arc but out of the many that occurred our boy yuji participated in five yuji fought against the fodder grasshopper curse he double teamed asakawa with megumi had my favorite fight in the series against chozo and his big ass fight against Maito, which technically is broken up into two separate fights because of what happens in the middle. You know what I'm talking about if you read that fight. All in all, very good stuff. So far, it definitely feels as if Yuji is the protagonist of the story and he has evolved with considerably a lot of stuff going on and we're consistently seeing his growth and evolution as a character and as a sorcerer so then we have the culling game prequel and then here things start to get a little little fuzzy now i will be the first to tell you that the culling games were almost excruciating to read week to week but over a binge read it did feel way better in the itadori extermination arc he faces off against yuta and subsequently loses i mean no shit he was gonna lose that fight we really don't see too much of them after that we do end up seeing a small bit of his backstory though even though it was a pretty pretty big lower drop. While everyone is preparing for the culling game, himself, Megumi, and Panda attempt to recruit Hakari. We get this pretty interesting dialogue from Yuji when he states that he is just a cog in the machine to help sorcerers destroy curses. Also a slight power scaling thing real quick, he took three unguarded blows from Hakari directly to his face and just got back up each time and walked up to him asking for help. This would have knocked anybody else out if they even attempted something like this or possibly killed them. Hakari claimed that Gojo said that his curse energy had an edge to it and Yuji described being punched by Hikari as getting hit with a serrated bat. Moving on, there's a pretty heavy focus on Maki for the next several chapters, and unfortunately during its time, Gege's health was at an all-time low, and chapters stopped releasing for a couple months. When the color games start, and over the course of the entire color games, Yuji only has two fights to date? And the first one he had was about a chapter and a half. Uh, this is where we really, really, really get to start running into problems. 
Yuji versus Higurama was interesting, and we get to dive a little more into Yuji's mentality. I mean, Yuji, Yuji blames the mass murder Sukuna committed in Shibuya on himself, as he felt that every life that was lost in that act was his own fault because he wasn't strong enough to stop it. Higurama was even perplexed by this as he read the file on Yuji that he acquired from Judge Man, and he could clearly tell that it was a separate being entirely that performed that atrocity. But after that, Yuji doesn't get a fight or any significant screen time until chapter 212, where Sukuna takes over on Megumi's body. That is almost 50 chapters of little to no Yuji, which is absolutely crazy to me. Can you imagine if we got 50 chapters of no Deku, no Naruto, uh, uh, the, no Hinata, you know what I mean, from Haikyuu? Like, bro, people would be up in arms. Now, I did enjoy his small fight against Sukuno because we got to see a bloodlusted Yuji give everything he had. We got some pretty interesting inklings of his backstory from Sukuno's dialogue. He still ended up losing that fight, but we got this gorgeous panel and showing of Yuji's determination when it comes to taking pain. If it's just pain, Itadori won't stop. I just, I, I, I love that quote, man. I'm a sucker for that. Even though people were saying that about another fan favorite character, and we all saw how that ended up, so... And as we get to nowadays, the center of the story is revolved around Sukuno and Gojo's fight. While I am enjoying the fight between the two strongest sorcerers of this era, I definitely have concerns for the future. So after going through a lot of what Yuji has experienced so far and the story up to now, let's kind of tackle this issue head on. For Yuji, he hasn't had a single fight against a major force that he has taken down by himself, which is kind of a problem. This isn't always a bad thing necessarily, but especially for power scalers, the fact that he almost always needs help to secure a victory makes him a fraud in a lot of people's eyes. Now, the thing is that Jujutsu Kaisen is known for quote unquote jumping. Like, they really be saying, fuck the fair wind, fuck that fade, I got places to be. But Megumi even fought a finger bearer and won by himself while Yuji has not needed help with anything else but the grasshopper curse? Also, this random fodder dude that like had propellers on his head or something, I, I, I don't know. Higurama doesn't even count because he let Yuji beat him because his conscience convicted him. And now, yes, he has just started Jujutsu only a couple months into the story, but that's still not good, man. Now let's compare him to Naruto. Power scaling aside, Naruto beat Haku, Gaara, Kiba, Neji, and Mizuki in part one of Naruto. Now granted, yeah, Neji and Haku, he had a chakra of the nine tails on his side, but that's just his power set. I can't necessarily take that away from him. That's like saying Itadori took these hits from Hikari because he's, you know, this cursed womb abomination or whatever the fuck he is. Like, I can't take that away. That's just him. You know what I mean? Yuji hasn't had anything like that. He hasn't had a, a Toji moment where the opponent he was fighting, he gets completely completely solo by himself and ascend because of something he discovered or something that this character put into him. Now he does have something extremely similar with his fight uh, with Maito and Toto where he's described to reach 120% of his power and he does get the finishing blow but Kenjaku ends up absorbing Maito so a lot of people don't even feel that that counts as a win. That was one of his main antagonists and he didn't even get the final kill. He defeated him, but he didn't take him out like he said he would. Regardless, though, he does have this fantastic back and forth with Maito, where Maito attempts to break down Yuji's mentality and conviction. But after losing to Yuji, Yuji says to Maito that it's true that he and Maito are the same. Yuji will never stop exterminating curses as long as he is alive, and that is simply his second nature, just like how killing is second nature to Mahito. Him talking to Hakari and explaining how he doesn't see himself as essential or of high importance is actually very important to his character. His grandfather told him before he died that he had to surround himself with friends and make sure they died good deaths, or uh, peaceful ones, rather. His self-preservation in the grand scheme of things is pretty low. He doesn't want to be the strongest around or become Hokage or the greatest hero. He wants to seal Sukuna away and ultimately take himself out so no harm can come to those around him as well as take Kanjaku down. This is vastly different from most shonen protagonists. I'm not counting Denji because that degeneracy can just stay over there, but it, yeah. Anyway, Ichidori still has a ton of gas left in the tank as far as being the main character goes. While Gojo and Sukuna are having their fight and people are flaming me in the comments for being the number one Sukuna defender, Ichidori still needs to have his time against Sukuna. Now here's the thing, if he were to fight Sukuna currently and Sukuna were actually to take him seriously, he would fucking die. But this man, Yuji, has literally nothing but a tougher hide and some vigor. We haven't even seen a black flash in like a hundred chapters. This man ain't got no domain expansion, no simple domain, no barrier techniques, no nothing. But that's the point. As we saw previously, Chozo gave him a book relating to the soul, and different techniques may lie in there that could dramatically boost him power scaling wise. We saw that he has a body swap technique at his disposal, but that's all we know so far. We still don't know anything concerning Yuji's youth, his family line, 
anything. I've actually seen some theories running around that Yuji's grandfather actually looks like Sukuna's Heian era form, and I can actually kind of see some stuff being involved with that. That actually be pretty interesting. Yuji needs to have a battle even more epic than Gojo and Sukuna are currently having because he deserves it. He needs it. I, among many other people, love seeing Yuji on screen, and I think that he's an interesting character to see him interact with other characters, and his fights are phenomenal whenever he has a chance to show out. His goals and motivations aren't typical, and his background and his youth are still so mysterious, it really plays into his favor. We still have no idea, also, what that memory thing Chozo experienced is. Also, just to clear something up, uh, the thing that Toto experienced, that was just Toto being weird. What Chozo experienced is something totally different. We still don't know what that is. I definitely feel like Yuji's lack of presence in the Koen game so far has been detrimental because he already is underpowered, but now that we don't even get that much focus on him, it's primarily been Maki and Megumi. I'm not complaining at all, by the way, because I love Maki's fights with, you know, Noya and the Zenin clan. And I love seeing Megumi uh, try his hardest against Reggie and out, you know, outsmart him. But honestly, Gege needs to place a lot more focus on Yuji after this whole Sukuna and Gojo fight, because our boy definitely needs some shine. Anyways, I just wanted to say that I don't think that Yuji is a bad MC at all. I definitely think he's quite the opposite. I love what he's in the story. I definitely think he is a better protagonist than Megumi would be. Kind Contrary to how the past 50 or so chapters have been, or uh, Utah, considering that Utah already, you know, he's, he's kind of complete. He doesn't really ha need, need an arc at this point, you know what I mean? But yeah, those are just my thoughts. Just let me know what you guys think, man. How you guys feel about Yuji as a protagonist? Do you guys love him? Do you hate him? Do you think that someone else should be the protagonist? Where do you guys think that Gay Gay will also take Yuji in the future? Anyways, guys, it's me, boy Daffy. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this video. Make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe. And yeah, I will see you in the next video. All right, peace.